Hi, my name's John, and welcome to Networking 101. Um, in, in this, the first of uh, what we hope will be a three-part series, we're going to talk about the very basics, the, the very fundamentals of <clears throat> networks and, and routers and switches, and kind of just uh, lay a foundation. Um, the, the disclaimer here, a lot of the things I'll say in this series um, there are exceptions to the rule. So basically every rule we've made in networking, we've probably broken it later down the road with a new protocol or a new technology, but this is kind of the foundational guidelines. Um, so later in your career, you may see some exceptions or some things that don't quite match with this. Those are the exceptions to kind of the rule here. So let's get started. So in the beginning, obviously, uh, one computer, uh, no network needed. You know, and that's obviously sad. We, we want to, you know, connect more than one computer together. So that's kind of the whole point of this thing. So uh, along come two computers here. And uh, they, they need a shared language to talk to. And they need a connection between them. So we connect a computer wire between Alice and Bob there. We'll use those names. Um, kind of a little convention for us. So connect an electrical wire. And we have to agree on kind of a basic unit of um, communication. And since all we got is an electrical wire, we'll say plus 5 volts on the wire means a 1, and minus 5 volts means a 0, for example. Um, and we'll use this to do what we call encoding data onto that wire. So we can signal each other, basically, like smoke signals or whatever, little electrical signals. So. A network protocol at its at its core is just a string of ones and zeros. Um, those those are really easy for computers to understand. One or zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's more complex, right? That requires a lot more uh, complexity in coding. So when the folks were just starting and come up with kind of the fundamentals of how computers would talk to each other, and in fact, computers would write data, they used ones and zeros. Okay, because those are really easy for both sides to understand. Um, humans obviously like to use uh, numbers in the, the decimal number system, a 10 base number system. Binary is just a 2 base number system, only two options. We'll talk about that more later on, though. So we're going to call each one or zero option a bit. Okay, that's the name for an option of a one or zero. And if we put eight of those together, we'll call that a byte. And so in networking, we talk about um, the unit of data transfer as uh, megabits per, or kilobits per second, one kbps, megabits per second, gigabits per second. We even go up to 10 gigabits, 100 gigabit links. So that's how many of these one or zero options uh, can be transferred in a second by our network medium, whatever that is. So we have a real simple network here, um, just two computers. And when you have two computers on a network, we both know who we're talking to, right? There's only one other person out there. So when Alice is sending to Bob, um, just send some data and vice versa. Um, the only tr complexity is if that they were both to talk at the same time, um, they, should, they, they would basically create this electrical um, voltage that is neither say a plus five or a minus five they would sum the voltages together so in that case we'd have a collision on that wire and um, maybe the easiest way to do it would be we just back off for a random amount of time and then each tree uh, each try uh, sending that transmission again and conversely if uh, if we hear the other person's transmitting we shouldn't transmit as well okay now, what, what complexity is added when we have more than two devices? Well, we got to know who we're talking to. We can't just assume when we talk that the other person will know the uh, transmissions for them. So kind of the obvious um, idea here is let's assign each of these computers an address. So Alice will be A, Bob will be B, Cindy will be C. So whenever we send data, we use their address to communicate. So now we're going to talk about the basics of a, a frame. We're going to introduce that concept for the first time. And a frame is just a, um, it's just a, a piece of data. 
and um, what will happen what will represent in the time space is is maybe we'll uh, put the destination address here and then the source address here so who's sending the message and then the message contents so first we'll put the bits for the um, the B there we'll put the bits to represent an A and then the bits to represent a message context and transmit that on this uh, shared wire here so here's a little um, a little example of that Alice uh, sends a packet there uh, to Bob so really A to B and that packet or that frame really and we'll talk about the distinction later but we'll use them in interchangeably for now um, gets sent onto this shared electrical wire and uh, gets forwarded onto Bob and to uh, Cindy down there uh, so Bob receives the frame and says oh that's for me uh, the destination is B and I have the B address Cindy receives the frame as well because remember this is just a shared electrical wire this is a piece of electrical cable here and um, so Cindy looks at the message and said oh that's to B so I'm going to discard it okay so so here we have you know the destination the source and then the message we have the basics of a protocol we talk about protocols extensively in networking but all we're really talking about is um, something like when you answer the phone so when somebody picks up the phone they say hello and the person on the other end says oh hey Alice it's Bob and uh, then maybe Alice will say oh hey Bob how are you now a protocol violation would be something where somebody's rude you know somebody just answers the phone and says hey what's your problem you know they see uh, the caller ID and they're upset so that's a protocol violation but you'll notice just in human communication and natural language we have some kind of protocols for the way we speak and how things work same with computers. So the, the type of network we have set up here as kind of indicated by the, the little red portion of the uh, drawing there is a, a shared bus topology. Okay, and That means that we just have one uh, electrical wire that everybody is on. Everybody sees everybody else's electrical transmission when somebody sends a one or a zero or a a frame, a combination of ones or zeros, everybody sees that. And that's kind of a, a limitation for us because that means everybody on this shared electrical wire can hear everything that's sent to everybody. Okay, and we have to connect this shared wire to all, basically in a, in, a, in a row to all of our different computers. And worse than that, if one computer breaks, that'll break that um, electrical wire that'll cause us problems so this is how networking was done for a lot of years but it's got to be a better way so long time ago they introduced hubs and and hubs allowed us to change the layout of our network a little bit so all the computers would um, connect to this central location um, and each of the computers has a dedicated electrical wire to that hub okay so if one computer disconnected from the hub it wouldn't break that shared electrical connection the hub would ma maintain that persistently for all the different computers so this network physically from how it's physically laid out in space is what we'll call us call a star topology okay all the computers connect to a central point but uh, logically how the how the packets are moving through our network we still have that shared bus behind the scenes we still have the architecture where everybody sees everything all the time everybody hears every packet of data that's sent out okay so a physical versus a logical topology are different physically they're connected as a star now rather than a bus but logically we still have the bus in inside that hub everybody sees everything so another problem we have is when when two packets are sent onto that shared logical bus inside the hub at the same time again they create a combination of their electrical voltages and um, that's a collision that's what we call a collision in networking two packets collide so the computers will sense something went wrong in that transmission and what they'll do is they, everybody everybody has to discard that frame and and back off and try again later okay 
So one of the one of the things we use uh, in the Ethernet standard, and we'll talk about Ethernet more later, is a protocol called Carrier Sense Multiple Access with Collision Detection. That's just the formal name for sensing that somebody else is sending data on the wire at the same time and detecting collisions. So you'll hear that that acronym, CSMACD. So the collision thing is obviously a real big problem, especially as you add more and more devices. We only have four right now, but man, oh man, can you imagine if you had a hundred? So to solve the problem, um, folks invented the switch. And now with the switch, each, each port, each port on the switch that a computer connects to has its own electrical bus. And therefore, uh, it has its own collision domain, we call it. And the switches are really smart, and this is the cool thing about switches, and we'll talk about a couple of cool things, but the switches are smart in that um, they won't forward a packet onto another device's wire um, if they know somebody's already transmitting data. So they have the ability to kind of hold onto packets and, and queue them, we call it, and then forward them out in order when they're ready. Let's talk about another concept. Um, half duplex versus full duplex communication. Half duplex means, it simply means you can only send or receive at the same time, one or the other, but not both. Full duplex communication or connectivity means that a device can send data at the same time it's receiving data. It can do both. So obviously we prefer um, full duplex communication. It actually doubles the available bandwidth. So solving the collision problem. So when we're able to combine switches that can store packets and then uh, put them in a queue and forward them out later with full duplex devices and cabling, we can ensure that collisions don't occur because there's a separate send and receive path as indicated there by the, the red and the blue arrows and the switch is holding that packet and waiting and, and sending them in order. It's like a, a line at a ride or something like that. So other bad things can happen to the packets, and that's kind of beyond the scope of, of this little talk right now, but, but at least the collision problem is solved, and that's really helpful as we scale out to hundreds or even thousands of devices. More about switches. We talked about switches being intelligent. Um, but not only do they, they solve the collision problem by breaking up what we call the collision domain, but they intelligently send packets to the correct port. Remember when a hub, when we had a hub installed, that packet that would come in from A would be heard by B, C, and D. What a switch can do is it can solve that problem so packets that are destined to C from A only get heard by C. B and D aren't even aware of that. That's good from a security perspective and just from a scalability perspective so other computers don't have to do as much work. To do this, what they do is they maintain an address table. Okay, And all that is is the switch, when it receives a packet, say on uh, port 1, it said, who is that packet from? Okay, it's from uh, a computer with the address A. Well, let me make a table in memory, and let me say, I've heard computer A on port 1. Or if B sends a packet, um, I've heard computer B on my port 2. So now if somebody sends a packet to B, uh, it, the switch will know, oh, just, just forward it to port 2, because I know B is over there for the time being. Well, what if a switch doesn't know the address yet? Uh, maybe it hasn't seen that device transmit before. Well, all it'll do then is, is take the packet and broadcast it out. And also, computers themselves can send broadcast packets that they need to. We'll talk about broadcast packets later on in the series, but all we're saying there is we don't know who the packet is, is going to be sent to, or the switch doesn't know where that, that uh, destination is. So in that case, it just floods the packets out to all of its ports, minus the port that it received the traffic from, okay? So when a broadcast is sent out, the basically the radius, the, 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 the um, grouping of devices 
that will hear that broadcast packet is called a broadcast domain. So we had the collision domain earlier. Who is everybody that will hear the collision? And now we have a broadcast domain. What is the, the group of computers that will receive any given broadcast? So as our networks grow and um, we add more and more devices, like we said, into the hundreds maybe or thousands even, the amount of traffic related to broadcast frames is significant um, because each packet, when it gets broadcasted out, has to go to each computer. So we need a way to break up broadcast domains, how far that broadcasts go. And, and so to do this, we'll insert a piece of gear called a, a router. Um, basically, we need to route traffic between segments. So this is where a router comes in, okay? Routers segment networks into separate broadcast domains. They do this this way. They don't forward broadcast packets that they receive onto other networks. So here on the left, if a broadcast packet were sent out, oops, get rid of the little menu bar here. So on the left, if a broadcast packet were sent over here, it wouldn't be heard over here on this side of the router. So it divides that broadcast domain in half. The other nice thing that routers do, and we'll talk about this a lot more later, is they can sum summarize the addresses used on each segment of the network. So over here on this, this left side, they say, this group of addresses over here may be A, B, C, and over on the right side, D, E, F are used. Okay. So in practice, networks are combined or are comprised of a lot of routers. In fact, the internet, one of the kind of core theses here is the internet is a giant network of routers. And the router's job is to find the best path to get closer to the destination in that packet. Remember, we talked about a packet from A to B. Well, the router may not know exactly how to get to B, but at least it'll get closer. And it will do this by forwarding the packet from hop to hop through the network, hopefully in the best path. You can see there are some inefficient paths here. So we could go from this red guy over to the white, over the white, back to the red. That would be kind of inefficient, it would seem. But the router will try to find the best path through the network to the destination. Maybe B's over here. Okay. Well, that's it for our first segment. In the next segment, we'll go way deeper into how packets are constructed and, and the ins and outs of network subnets and addresses. All right, thanks.